Today's Cowboys report is presented by Roan. We've got training camp takeaways, a kind of wild Dalvin Cook report, and more. You guys can get 20% off on all of Roan's products when you use promo code CHATSPORTS over at roan.com slash chatsports. Before we get going, a reminder to be a part of the Nodi gang here at Chat Sports and the Cowboys report. That way you're not missing any video. We're doing a bunch all throughout the training camp time frame preseason we'll have watch parties so make sure you're part of the noted gang turn those notifications to all instead of personalized type me in the comment section if you guys are part of the noted gang that way you won't miss any video and by the way you help me feed my family in the process some training camp takeaways to get going uh to uh, to begin today's show i should say Yesterday, the offense, I think, pretty clearly had the leg up over the defense. Today, complete opposite. The defense had a fantastic showing. It is still mostly some 9-on-7, 7-on-7, some team drill stuff. They're not really even calling the best plays on both sides. Still kind of the ramp-up process. But make no mistake, even in the Mojo moment, that one kind of is more of the called scenarios of best-on-best. Best. Defense definitely had the advantage over the offense in pretty much all areas. Quarterback Dak Prescott, after a really good day yesterday, did not have his best stuff today. If we're going to do the whole tracking training camp stats, which I think is pretty dumb, we're going to do it right. One interception for Dak Prescott. There were two near misses. One, Stephon Gilmore, really nice play along the sidelines, only got one foot down. Uh, Nashawn Wright did make another INT. That one, mm, if, if you ever got the honest answer... Uh, we'll, 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 get, we'll get back to that one here in a minute. Uh, the other one was Trayvon Diggs. Oh, probably should have picked it off. Also probably should have been called for, for DPI. Pass was in a good place, but Gallup never got his hands up because Diggs' hands were all over him. But hey, defense won one. That's a good sign for them. All right, I wanted to mention this part too here. Um, the one interception and the one near interception were both passes to Simi Fihoko. And I don't think that's an accident. Doesn't excuse Dak making a bad throw or whatever. But the one actual interception, Fihoko's very slow to come out of his break, doesn't get back to the football. And I doubt you'd actually get an honest answer the same way we didn't really get honest answers uh, out of Dak last year in terms of, I think they would have blamed Gallup a little bit more than they did publicly, frankly. You got to go back and get the football. And with Jalen Tolbert impressing, Jalen Brooks, more on him in a little bit, by the way, continuing to flash. Kevontae Turpin making some nice splash plays overall and looking more like not just a gadget player. I am sounding the I am concerned alarm about Sima Fihoko. There is a really good size-speed combination, but it has not translated to enough good plays. He did have a nice rep uh, in the kind of fourth and five scenarios they were practicing on. Defense dominated that, by the way. But I'm a little bit worried there. Hoping it changes over the next couple days and in the preseason games, but I kind of think Fahoko right now is behind Turpin and Tolbert and, frankly, Brooks as it sits right now in the wide receiver room. So will Fahoko make the Cowboys roster? Y for yes, N for no. This will be today's pinned comment. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know what you think will happen with the Cowboys roster. Now, speaking of the wide receivers, let's not sleep on Jalen Brooks. We mentioned him in our training camp winners and losers, but I've been pretty impressed so far with what we've seen out of Brooks being able to make some plays, had another quality uh, camp practice. Every year, there's normally at least one receiver who really impresses. Sometimes they make the team, sometimes they struggle once the games get going or when the pads get on, but I do want to give Jalen Brooks some love, and I want to give Osa Odigizua some love. We mentioned him in passing on the winners and losers video yesterday, but another strong day for him. I think it would be an ideal outcome if Osa, the agent 0097, has a true breakout year. The one thing this defense doesn't really have is that dynamic interior presence. If Osa as a three technique, that more pass rushing focused role, can take a step forward, take advantage of all the one-on-one -on -one blocks he'll be able to get alongside Tank and Micah and, uh, and, and Mozzie Smith, that could be a really big deal for the Dallas Cowboys. 
Speaking of deals, 20% off when you go to roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports. The commuter collection from Rome can get you straight through the workday and right into whatever comes next. I am rocking one of their polos today, by the way. They've got pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear with the Roan commuter collection. They've got four-way stretch fabric. Gives you breathability and flexibility for whatever life ends up throwing your way. they got gold fusion anti-odor tech, so you're not smelling stinky at all either. Head to Roan.com slash chat sports and use promo code chat sports for 20% off your entire order. That's R-H-O-N-E dot com slash chat sports to get that 20% off when you use promo code chat sports. Find your corner office comfort today. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. All right, let's move to kind of a, a wild story. Then we'll go back to the kicker battle and Dak and Diggs drama, in air quotes. Uh, Dalvin Cook stuff continues to circulate around the NFL. And the latest claim is from Plaxico Burris. Yes, the man whose first name became a, a, a verb because you Plaxicoed yourself. Uh, he claims... The Jets are out of the mix, and the reason why Ezekiel Elliott's not going to come to the Cowboys is because they're leaving that spot open for Dalvin Cook. Now, mind you, Adam Schefter's update, which we'll get into, was very, very different. And frankly, I'm not really sure why we trust Plaxico Burris here. Uh, Now is, I guess, a guest for the Craig Carton Show, which is a terrible show. Fox has, like, one good analyst, maybe two two or three, and the good one's Dave Helm. Like, it's just, it's not a good grouping up there. It doesn't make any sense to me. Plaxico, it's weird, like, these former players are trying to beat the insider. By the way, the same show also said it was a guaranteed Cook would sign with the Jets. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Here's what Adam Schefter said. This one makes a lot more sense, by the way. He's not in a rush. He wants to make sure that the money is right. The Jets have been interested. The Dolphins have been interested. They're obviously, right now, not interested enough to make an offer to force him to sign, he's still waiting for a little bit more. No mention there at all of the Dallas Cowboys as Cook continues to wait for the reason he, you see on screen here. The Jets and Dolphins are the two teams linked. Dallas hasn't shown any real interest. And by the way, I don't think you can give Dalvin Cook what he wants, which is somewhere between, I don't know, 5 and $10 million, and be like, we have no money for Zach Martin. Yeah, you can't. Can't, uh, can't make that play there. I don't see Dalvin Cook signing in Dallas. If you want to sign for $3 million bucks, let's ride. Don't see that one happening. I think we'll get more money and probably more playing time somewhere else. So rate your interest for me in Dalvin Cook. We'll say like four if for his number is at the right price, which is about where I'm at. Sound off for me in the comment section. Scale it from zero to ten. I am still a bit excited about these young backs, by the way. Malik Davis, Deuce Vaughn. Uh, I'll let you guys in on a secret. If you saw that video I posted of Deuce Vaughn looking really quick, it's actually s- sped up. I, d- I did it to be funny. Uh, a couple of you guys got it. I'm, I'm very proud of you. So if you saw that, that's just our little inside joke. You made it this far into the show, at least. Rico Dowdle, not much buzz going on Hunter Lipke. I think we might see more of him in the preseason. We'll get a good feel for who the Cowboys want to give reps to based on who even plays and what the order is in that first preseason game. Look, is Dalvin Cook better than Malik Davis, Deuce Vaughn, Dowdle? Yeah, he's way more proven at minimum, and he's got a 1,000-yard season. Those guys don't have 1,000-yards combined. I mean, they probably have 100 yards combined <laughs> between them, 200-ish at this stage. So it's about the value. It's about the investment. The Cowboys, as Mike McCarthy has said, wants to see what those young guys can do. Football is back, or at least training camp football is back. No joint practices this year for Dallas, but hey, the offense versus defense is I think better than most of the joint practices you'll find. We're going to keep you guys covered, so make sure you are subscribed. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Let's update you on the kicker battle, which continues to be... Uh, th- this, this is mid. This is mid. Brandon Aubrey is 15 of 20. He went 4 of 6 today. He's got misses from 39, 43, 44, and then 2 from 45. He is still ahead of Tristan Vizcaina, who also went uh, 4 of 6 today. Uh, they're 14 of 20 now. Both are 3 for 3 in mojo moments. Some more shorter misses, though, from Vizcaino. 33, 41, 45, 46, and 48. Can be a bit windy, by the way, uh, in Oxnard, which makes it a good challenge. But 
Again, I don't think anyone should feel immensely confident in the kicker battle. We'll just have to keep our eyes on it. Could be some players come available later this month slash September. So who wins the kicker job? TV for Tristan Vizcaino, BA for Brandon Aubrey, or O for other if you think it's somebody else. I still got my eyes on Nick Folk, by the way. Get those votes in for me in the comment section right now. TV and BA. We will wrap up today's show with some more conversation on the whole Dak Diggs, I don't know, drama, I guess I'll call it. Uh, both players downplaying it. And frankly, unless you're a national media talking head and or you played for a rival team, not really many people are upset about it. Certainly not around the Cowboys, the organization, the players, or etc. It's really not an actual story. This is kind of how Diggs and Dak are. If you remember Hard Knocks, for example, Dak even got Amari Cooper into it a little bit, and there was a $1,000 bet, which I don't think ever got paid, uh, between those two about a completed pass. That's just how that rivalry, rivalry is. They're boys in the end. If you don't believe me, well, you can listen to former players or Dak or Diggs themselves, as we'll get into. Jesse Hawley, who, of course, played with a bunch of different NFL teams, including the Patriots, says, like Shady McCoy, because LaShawn McCoy is just trying to get an, a rise out of you guys. If you stop giving him attention, he'll go away. I, too, play on a team with Tom Brady, and I vividly remember players like Brandon Spikes and Vince Wil Wilfork talking major shit during practice, and Tom talking it right back. Trash talking happens in practice no matter the position. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you don't believe Jesse Holly. Maybe you'll believe Trayvon Dix. He said, quote, I feel like it makes practice fun. At the end of the day, that's my brother. I love Dak to death. There's nothing behind it. It's just competitiveness. It's just football. Stay out of our business. People don't need to worry about what we got going on. Our relationship my relationship with my brother. Dak is leader of our team, and I'm out there have a great year. I have the utmost respect for Dak. Maybe you don't believe Diggs. Maybe you don't believe Holly. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you'll believe Dak Prescott. It's honestly one of those things you realize a lot of people haven't been in heated competitions. I feel bad for the people who haven't been in those moments. I start a lot of it. Some guys practice and play better when they're talking trash. I invite it. This is not a big story. It continues to kind of blow my mind, the wild attention that is being paid to Dax interception somehow, even though the same level of, of, of attention is not paid to anybody else out there in football. We're not, we're, we're not cutting up highlights of Dax interceptions for any other quarterback. It's only Dax that that ends up happening to, which kind of, uh, it's, it's the attention that comes with being a cowboy, I guess, there. We're talking about Dak and Diggs, who are very tight. They're very good friends. They're boys. And by the way, that is not the worst that's been said between them. And they're not even the biggest trash talker. It's probably J. Ron Curse, by the way. He's a big-time trash talker. Yet we ignore the fact that Josh Allen got in a fight with, it, with a teammate. The whole Cam Newton, Josh Norman thing. Like, this happens. It's not a big deal. It's weird that it continues to be, to be made out into one. But if you'd rather listen to the talking heads who just want to get a rise out of you, that's fine, I guess.